Ladies and gentlemen, here's tonight's top 10 list. Let's go. Hey, and while my top 10 list may not make you laugh, it may make you rich. I think that's even better, don't you? I'm John Benson. I'm here to help make you unignorable, and this is Sales Copy Secrets. Welcome back to my 10 point copywriting checklist. These are the 10 things you have to have before you ever even think about writing one word of a sales letter, of a video sales letter, of a webinar, anything that requires a lot of selling, you need to have all 10 of these checked off like a machine, man. And I'm gonna tell you all 10 of them today. And all you gotta do is watch the video all the way to the end to get all 10 because guess what? These are not in order. So you need all 10 of them. You're gonna to need to watch this whole thing. I know, it's a horrible thing to ask you to invest, what, seven, eight, 10 minutes of your time? I know it's tragic to help make you money. I'm so sorry, I beg, I beg your forgiveness. No, I actually don't at all, because I'm here to help make you money. So stop what you're doing, watch this, and do me a favor, comment, share, like, subscribe, all of that is below. Love to hear from you, all right? So let's dive into the training. So what I recommend is you getting out a Google Doc or text edit or whatever you use to take notes. Make sure that you open this before you do any sort of writing so that you, in other words, you keep this in a place that you know you're gonna find it. Don't try to rely on memory because believe you me, I've missed a lot of these by relying on memory before. So make sure you got this written down somewhere where you can check it out. And we're gonna dive into each one of the 10 to some degree today, I'm gonna to go into further detail on each one of these 10 in other videos. And some, if you look below, I've already talked about and you definitely want to check those out after you watch this, okay? Checkpoint number one, know your avatar as well as they know themselves, down to the picture, okay? I know who my avatar is before I start writing anything. I have a vision of them. I actually put a picture sometimes on my computer so I see who I'm talking to. I know them so well. Unless you know your avatar, you're just gonna stumble right out of the starting gate. So there's no point in even writing the letter if you're not gonna do the avatar research. So if you don't know your avatar, a great place to find out more about them is find a Facebook group that they would populate, like know enough about them to know where they would go. Now, some of this is pretty obvious. For example, if you're writing a weight loss offer, they would be in a weight loss weight, uh, weight loss group, or if it's a specific kind of weight loss offer, maybe in a ketogenic group, get into the group if you can, assuming that that's part of your own interest. Don't cheat, okay? But see if you can get some information and just read some of their concerns so you know a little bit more about them. Another good trick to do to know your avatar is to go on Amazon and look for products that you know that they would buy and read reviews. You can hear some of their own problems in their own words and that will really help. So step number two, checkpoint number two is to create a hook. I know, that's like saying, oh, step two, cure cancer. It's, uh, hooks are difficult, I get that. But I'm gonna give you a very simple sentence that if you can finish the sentence, you've you're close to a hook. It's not a guarantee because you can finish the sentence in kind of a crappy way, but it will give you at least a little bit of a leverage guide to go by on hook creation. In case you don't know, a hook is the unique mechanism. It's the reason why your product or service works. It's not the product or service. It's the unique mechanism that's propelling it, behind it. And you wanna create a hook that is both somewhat mysterious sounding and also elicits that feeling of, oh, I've gotta know more about that. That sounds really intriguing. Maybe that's why I'm not blank. Maybe that's why I'm not losing weight. Maybe that's why I'm not getting married or whatever you're trying to write to, okay? Maybe that's why my dog pisses all over the house. I don't know. So here is that sentence, ready? The secret to whatever your topic is, success, is what many experts are now calling blank. If you can put two to three words in that blank that sounds compelling, a little enticing, different than other people are saying, it's something that sticks out, it's going to go a long way. I've got a whole list of hooks that I've created. One of my most famous was called Caloric Staggering. So let me finish that sentence with Caloric Staggering. That would simply be, the secret to weight loss success is what many experts are now calling Caloric Staggering. So when you hear it, you kind of know what it is, but you kind of don't. And it sounds like, oh, maybe that's why I'm not losing weight. I have to know more about it. So that's what a hook is. Checkpoint number three, I have defined what I call the primary complaint and the primary goal of my avatar. 
and I know exactly how to word it. Now, what is a primary goal on a primary complaint? Well, primary goal is the number one thing they want to achieve related to your offer. And the primary complaint is the number one thing in their life that they complain about or say, this is a problem for me, this is a pain point for me related to what your offer covers. So again, I'm gonna teach using weight loss. Primary goal might be something as simple as losing weight. A primary complaint may be going on a restricted diet or having to give up my favorite foods. Now we're gonna go into more about primary goals and primary complaints, how to create them in a future video again, but you do wanna know the big picture. In other words, what's their number one thing that they want to achieve and what's the number one thing they complain about? Like think about when they get out of bed in the morning, what's the first thing that they would say related to the topic that you're talking about? For example, if it's weight loss and they get out of bed and they're achy and they're stiff, and they look at themselves in the mirror and might be like, ah, oh, I just can't stand another day in this body. Okay, well, that might be the making of a primary complaint. Now, checkpoint number four is what we call secondary goals and secondary complaints. And the mystery and secret behind these is these are what actually sell your product or service. Secondary goals are based on primary goals. So in other words, if, you, if your primary goal is to lose weight, what are the goals that you can achieve once you've achieved the primary goal? Losing weight now allows you to blank, and this is going to be their secondary goals. Losing weight now allows you to look great in your high school jeans again, or wear that bikini anywhere you want, or feel good and have energy all day long. You get the, those are secondary goals. Those are the things that someone really actually wants. They just need to do the primary goal. They need to lose the weight, but they want to get the secondary goals. The same is true of secondary complaints. These are the things that are really nagging at somebody all the time. So you look at the primary complaint and then you say, because X is happening, so is Y, Z, A, B, and C. And those are the things that really sell. So I'll use a very simple primary complaint. Let's say that it's for weight loss and let's say that it is suffering through a boring, bland diet. Okay, that's not a primary complaint really, that's kind of a secondary one, but some people think that's their primary complaint, so let's use that. What else happens when you have to suffer through a boring and bland diet? Well. You, your social life starts to suck. You start getting neurotic about every little food you eat. You start counting grams of fat and protein and it gets really, really tedious. You see where we're going with this. This is the stuff that they won't have to do with your product or service. Your product or service's goal is to remove as many secondary complaints as humanly possible and achieve as many secondary goals as humanly possible. You do those two things, you are in. Checkpoint number five, I take those primary goals, secondary goals, all that stuff I just said, and I build my benefits and my bullets. Now I've got videos on both down below. All right, check those out. So I won't go into how to do that here, but that's where I get all the juicy stuff. So I start writing benefits and bullets and benefits and bullets. So I know the language that I'm gonna be using already. I'm gonna got the whole tenor of the site down. So I get that stuff out of the way first and foremost. And from there we get to, Point number six, and that is creating a USP or a unique selling proposition. So we need a unique way to sell this product or service. Now I'm gonna give you a very, very simple USP formula. I'm gonna, if you fill in the blanks here, you got a USP and it's up to you if you wanna put in the hook or not. Ready? A revolutionary new medium, that's how the product or service is delivered, for avatars, that's who it's for, that Primary benefit, in other words, what's the number one benefit that this product or service is gonna give this avatar without pain, without some pain point that they hate. So let's take a look at this in light of a weight loss offer, a revolutionary new weight loss plan for men and women over 40 that allows you to lose all the weight you want without sacrificing your favorite foods or stepping foot into the gym. Okay, now that's a very simple, right off the top of my head, because I've done it so many times, uh, USP for weight loss, but now you see how I'm doing it. I'm just plugging and matching and all that kind of stuff. Now, if I wanted to use my caloric staggering hook, here's what that might sound like. A revolutionary new weight loss plan for men and women over 40 that leverages the power of caloric staggering and allows you to lose all the weight you want without counting calories or stepping foot in a gym. There you go. It's a little longer, but I got the juicy part of the hook in. Okay, point number seven, I'm running out of fingers, is social proof. 
as much of it as you can get. And let me give you this tip on social proof. You wanna use social proof around like grabbing Facebook comments or getting text messages and putting those in there. Of course, you know, blot out any sort of personal data, of course, but stuff that, that looks really, really provable. In other words, it's real. It's not just a quote on a page, okay? So at the very minimum, have a picture beside that quote at the very least, right? But even better than that is video. And here's a great tip for you to, if you don't have enough social proof. You can actually email out to your clients and go, hey, we're having a contest here. Whoever sends me the best 20 second testimonial about name of product or service, and it's real, we're gonna give away blank. And just make sure that's something that the customer can really use, like maybe an hour group coaching call, or we're gonna give away this free bonus. So you want to entice them without outright bribing them and just make sure that they know that, hey, these have to be provable results. This is a great way for you to build some really, really killer social proof. Point number eight that you need to check off is make sure you've got every single objection you can possibly think of covered, meaning that you've gone through every reason why they might say no to your offer and you've got, ah, here's the answer to that. Here's why that should be flipped to a yes. And here's what I do. I drizzle these throughout the sales letter, okay? So I'll drizzle a couple of things like, you may be thinking to yourself, well, John, I've tried a weight loss diet before, it hasn't worked before. Or John, I tried cutting carbohydrates down before and that didn't work before. I've got an answer immediately. I go, well, here's what's interesting about that. The reason why is because it didn't include this. I'm gonna tell you more about it in this letter. It could be something as simple as that. And then at the end of the letter, I'll go through just a rapid fire, just hammer over the head every single point again until they get it in their mind that, hey, you can't get away from saying yes to this offer from any of their traditional excuses or reasons or whatever you have that you've used in the past. I've got every objection covered. Point number nine. <laughs> is that I've got a call to action. In other words, a order button, a command to go here now and get this or go to this URL if you're on a webinar and buy this. That's simple, clear, concise with a price point that is reasonable. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're gonna go a little high, a little low on price sometimes, and it might take you a little bit of time to get the ideal price down, but you do need the call to action to be very clear. You don't wanna send somebody to uh, uh, some sort of thing that they have to think through, like uh, here's your call to action. We've got six different plans you can choose from, right? Well, some businesses have six plans and they, you, they need you to choose. But what we do is suggest that you say, hey, we've got six different plans, but here's the one that we're gonna specialize on during during this webinar or during this offer or whatever it is, we want you to take advantage of the X plan and you just pull out one plan. And if they don't like it, then you can downsell them to the other plans. But that removes all that friction from buying something. Make them only choose one thing, two at the outside. Like if you've got this, or you can get this plus this, you know, in other words, you had an add-on, like for example, you have a flat fee, then you can get a little bit more if you add the little monthly fee. That's as far as you wanna go when it comes down to having someone make a choice. Yeah, if you can remove all the choices, even better. Frictionless checkout is what you wanna think. And finally, number 10, number 10, that's like 30, I think. Number 10, I have a perfectly clear picture of what my avatar's life is going to look like 30 days after they purchase my product or service, as well as 30 days if they do not purchase my product or service. And I can spell that out vividly. The first one is called future pacing, which we've already talked about in previous videos, okay? I walk them through what their life is gonna look like a week from now, two weeks from now, and 30 days from now. And that life is pretty outstanding. But at the crossroads close, where I say, you now you have two choices, the first choice is to do nothing. Here's what that's gonna look like for you. I can also spell out that, which is obviously a much darker, bleaker future that we don't want for our customers, all right? You now have my 10 point checklist for copywriting that you need to go through every single time you write anything revolving around a sales letter, a webinar, a VSL, anything that requires a lot of writing, use this checklist. And now you know exactly which 10 points to check off, what you need to make a letter work, and that will help you as a copywriter or a marketer avoid losing money on a sales letter. For example, if you're sending traffic to a sales letter, you wanna get as much bang for your buck. You wanna give yourself the greatest chance to succeed as humanly possible, and each of these 10 will most certainly do that so that you can make more money and stop losing sales where you don't got to. And in my next video, I'm gonna be talking about the differences between features and benefits. This is very important, but even cooler than that, I'm gonna give you a tip to turn boring product features 
into killer sales tools, man. Killer tools that can actually help you sell more by listing off boring stuff about the product. Just one simple trick will do it. Now that's coming up in the next video. So until then, I want you to look down below, comment, and do me a favor while you're down there. Subscribe if you haven't already. Like this video, share it with a friend. And don't forget, I am John Benson, and I am here to help make you unignorable.